What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today it is week 36. We're looking into the Glassnode Insights on-chain analysis. Before we get into that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those who have, I truly appreciate it. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Also, while you're down there, uh, click the link that takes you over to the library, which is also known as Odyssey. You can download that on your phone. Um, it's a YouTube alternative, getting ready for the censorship resistance future. And also leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let's just please be civil with our discourse and kindness and compassion are absolutely easy to use by everybody. Let's all do it. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. Week, the week on chain, week 36, 2021, the Bitcoin market shows continued strength as on chain volumes indicate a growing dominance and stickiness of institutional transaction sizes and capital inflows. <clears throat> The Bitcoin market has continued to power higher, breaking out of last week's consolidation to new multi-month highs. Prices traded up from the weekly low of 46,562 to reach a high of 51,838. As renewed optimism follows positive price action, on-chain transaction volumes are showing continued growth in dominance by large institutional sized capital. We are also seeing declines in volumes spent by long-term investors a preference to hodl and the accumulation of young coins. Miners have also started spending coins this week as hash rate recovers over 42% since July lows. Miners take profits off the table. The Bitcoin mining market continues to recover after half of the hash power came offline during the great migration out of China. The 14-day median hash rate has recovered to 128 etahashes per second, which is approximately 29% below the all-time high and reflects a 42% recovery from the July lows. The increase in hash rate is likely a combination of previous, previously obsolete hardware finding a second lease on life and miners in China successfully relocating and reestablishing or rehoming their hardware and operations. Competition in the mining market has continuously increased over time, leading the protocol difficulty to consistently rise. This growth has occurred despite the progr programmatic decline in new BTC issuance with each halving event. As a result, macro BTC rewards per hash have been a long-term decline, whilst minor incomes are denominated in BTC, their CAPEX and OPEX costs are largely denominated in fiat currency. This makes minor effective revenue subject to price volatility. With such a large portion of the mining hardware offline and the global production constraints on the ASIC chip manufacturer, the current mining market is finding itself slow to respond to elevated coin prices since uh, 2020. There are simply fewer machines fighting over the same number of coins trading at higher coin prices. As a result, minor USD revenue per hash has now risen back to July 2019 levels of $380,000 per hectare hash, making an operational miner exceptionally profitable on a historical basis. As BTC prices hover around $50,000 $50, range over the last few weeks, some of these miners have started spending a portion of their coin balances to lock in profits. This week, around 2,900 BTC have been spent from miner balances equal to around 145 million at uh, the $50,000 prices. This may be a combination of affected miners in China obtaining fiat liquidity to cover costs or operational miners taking profit and de-risking after the May sell-off. It is also likely that some of this revenue is earmarked for redeployment into facility expansion and acquiring hardware from secondhand or new ASIC markets. Note the chart below uses our worksheet uh, workbench tool to subtract out the Patoshi coins to reflect the new coin balance held by the remainder of the mining market. I think that might have been Satoshi coins. <clears throat> In response, the minor net position change has returned to a neutral level, indicating an on-net equilibrium between minor accumulation and minor spending over the last 30 days. 
It is typical for minor net position change metric to oscillate between the 5,000 and negative plus 5,000 and negative 5,000 BTC per month, making the current dynamics reasonably expected behavior. And the market has clearly absorbed the additional sell side pressure. Transaction size on the rise. A key theme and characteristic of the 2020 to 2021 market cycles has been the increase in institutional size capital. This trend is increasingly visible on chain and even after the 50% correction in May appears to be relatively sticky. The average USD transaction size in the 2019 to 2020 bear market was typically between $6,000 and $8,000. This period was largely dominated by retail and early investment fund participants. The 2020, the 20 to 21 bull market saw average transaction sizes increase significantly into a peak of 58.6 thousand or 58,600 during the May sell-off. This has largely cooled off from July onwards with the current average transaction size between 30,000 and $36,000. Relative to the 2019, 20 period, this represents a significant uh, 370% increase despite the recent correction reflecting continued and stick, uh, sticky institutional size interest. Further support for this observation is found uh, the rising proportion of transaction uh, volume dominance by $100,000 plus sizes. In the chart below, we see the gradual squeezing of smaller size capital, which is less than $100,000 in yellow to red from 40% dominance in 2017 to represent only 10 to 20% of on-chain volumes today. Conversely, institutional and high net worth size capital of over $100,000 in green has expanded significantly over the last 12 months. The cohort moving between 1 million and 10 million light green has consistently represented between 20 and 30% of transactional volume since 2017. You can see the chart below now. The $10 million plus cohort dark green, however, have grown considerably from only 10% in the October 2020 to over 30% dominance today. This reflects a notable growth in large size capital allocation and trading activity. Note that this data is an entity adjusted and thus filters for only economically meaningful activity, which excludes self spends and exchange wallet management, for example. Young coin volume dominates. Another observation regarding transactional volumes relates to the classification based on the coin ages. That means how long has the coin been in existence in a certain wallet? We have recently released a new metric called the Spent Coin Average Bands, SVAB, which classifies the proportion of daily coin volume by coin age. It is a counterpart of the Spent Output Age Bands, the SOAB metric, which ignores coin volume and only looks at age brackets in proportion to the daily transaction count. Some general principles for interpretation of these metrics are when more old coins, which are greater than six months are spent, there is a higher probability that previously illiquid coins are coming back to the liquid circulation. This is most common during capitulation events and in bull markets as coins are sold into strength. When more coins, uh, which are one day to six months are spent, when more young coins, one day to six months are spent, there is a higher probability that the smart money investors and long-term holders are holding and the accumulation is taking place as hot coins are taken off the market. Hot coins are those with a lifespan of less than one week. These dominant day-to-day -day network traffic uh, are more likely to be respent in, re in response to volatil volatility. From a macro view, we can see that hot young coins uh, volume spike and dominate on-chain volumes in three typical occasions. Blow off tops where trading speculation and hot money movements re uh, reach a maximum. Two, capitulation events where new buyers are shaken out in mass and coins change hands many times during high volatility. Smart money also tend, uh, also tend to step in and accumulate. The disbelief rallies at the start of a bullish trend as traders sell into the first market strength seen in a long time. Which could be like what we have just seen. Dominance of hot coins less than a week volume is currently at a relative strength of 94% of spent coin volume. Simultaneously, middle and old coin around a month uh, or more is the volume on that is at extreme low uh, of less than 2% dominance, which is even lower than the bear market uh, base load seen in 2019 2020. 
What this suggests is that the vast majority of coins spent at the moment, even as prices breached $50,000, are highly liquid coins and old coins are remarkably dormant. This indicates that conviction to hodl is extremely high and lack of liquid supply could squeeze the spot market prices higher. To further confirm this analysis, we see the volume of revived supply order or older than one year has fallen below 5,000 BTC per day. This indicates that investors who own coins older than one year are spending less to hodl and hodling more even as prices rally. Previously, previous events with low revived one year plus supply correlate with a late stage bear market and early bull markets. Leverage reaches new heights. Okay, this is very relevant because I'm reading this a day late and we just saw a major uh, squeeze in the market today, right? <clears throat> Dropping 20% for Bitcoin. The final observation this week relates to the derivatives market. Alongside positive sentiment and conviction to hodl in spot and on-chain markets, we are seeing open interest approach or reach all new to all new all-time highs for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin perpetual future, futures markets currently have over 11.8 billion in open contracts, which is trending strongly towards the April peak of 15 billion. Look at that. The market appears to be net long in perpetual futures markets with funding rates of BTC hitting approaching 0.03%. Uh, while this level of positive lean is not overly uh, high relative to the level seen in Q1, Q2, it is similar to the funding rate seen just prior to the May sell-off. This could create a short-term headwind if longs are squeezed out of their positions. <laughs> so, like I said, short-term headwind. Headwinds come against you. This effect is even more pronounced for Ethereum, where the perpetual futures open interest has surpassed the previous all-time high, sitting uh, hitting 7.8 billion this week. And we did see, if you go and look at the ETH versus BTC chart, it dropped heavily. Okay, funding rates for ETH futures have similarly accelerated higher, reaching a 0.02%, a level coincident with that seen prior to the May sell-off. While the supply dynamics and spot marks continues to show strength, caution and awareness is appropriate when, the high, when of high degrees of leverage has entered derivatives markets. The combination of positive funding rates and um, high open interest can be an important indicator set for assessing a shorter term risk of cascading long liquid liquidations. Yeah, and that is exactly what we saw, okay? So this is just another reason why you should uh, listen and follow along with these insights. Thank you to Glassnode. Thank you to all of you uh, following along. I love you so much. Take care. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.